never ever have I ever heard a woman say, you know what, I did not want uh, help or I did not need support. Exactly. What you do hear women saying when they share their birth stories is that, you know, they wish they had more support or they appreciated the support that they had, right? Yes. One of those two things. And in particular for our women, for our culture, for 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 the, our sisters, our families out there, is that the, the known fact is, is that our families and our communities have not been functioning the way that they were meant to function, the way that we originally functioned before living in captivity, meaning that we don't have as many as the tight circles and networks um, around us. What's even more true is that coming into the truth, even if you did have a family support before, you that family support, you may not have it in the same way anymore because you have either separated yourself because of this truth or you've been ostracized because of this truth, right? Um, and so more than ever during your pregnancy and your labor and your birth and those postpartum weeks, are so important that you have the resources available to you or that you have someone to help um, organize the resources around you. Because some of these sisters are lucky. They belong to an assembly or to a camp. They have other sisters and families to fellowship with. That being said, are they organizing themselves in a way that's most helpful for you, a new mom? Right? Maybe they are. That's fantastic if they're doing that. And if that's what's happening, maybe some of those persons, those sisters that are supporting that work might be interested in this birth work to, to be able to do it from an even more informed lens um, with this training and this education. Um, but if you don't have that, hiring um, a sister or hiring a doula, hiring a sister who is providing that birth sister um, support from a Hebraic lens may be exactly what your family needs. Okay, so Shalom, can you please Shalom. introduce yourself? My name is Aisha and I'm here today to talk about birth work and uh, early, early years parenting and everything uh, that such that goes like with that. Awesome, awesome. So um, you are newly trained as a doula, correct? Or correct, correct, as a birth sister. A birth sister. And, mm -hmm. So we'll get into that um, when we talk a little bit more about what a birth sister or what a doula is. Um, but um, newly trained as a, a birth sister, but I've been working um, with families um, with children zero to 29 actually all the way up through the youth the early years middle years and um, for youth for just about almost 30 years now um in the field in the sector and doing community work um and so just recently added the the doula piece which includes preconception coaching um as well as uh, pregnancy support and birth and labor and postpartum support. And then doing that from a Hebraic lens um, for families that are looking for an option that, um, that is within Torah and helps them to uh, put their faith into practice as we rehearse these righteous acts. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Tell me exactly what is a doula? Okay, so first let's talk about the word doula. So the word doula is actually a byword. Um, and we, um, as descendants of, of Israelites, we know very much what those what bywords can be and, and what they mean. And in um, this instance, it's, a, it's no different. So um, a little bit of history. Um, Women all over, but um, but uh, so-called Black women in particular, especially here in the Americas, um, have been doing birth work all along. There has always been somebody in the community, somebody's auntie, friend, or you know, the lady that is everybody's auntie um, that's just catching babies, right? Yeah. Um, and they were good at it. They had the natural sense for it. They um, were in tune with the Most High. Um, whatever their expression of faith was, um, as well as in tune with the, the herbs, the healing herbs and, and, um, and the natural remedies uh, to support 
um, conception to support uh, pregnancy and then later postpartum. Um, but as with all things, um, when the system gets involved, there's needs for, they create, um, they create a need for, I guess, validation, right? They create a way to be able to tell somebody else if they can do something or not do it or how accredited they are at doing it. So that's actually how the licensed midwife uh, began. Essentially, all of these women, whether they were, whether you want to call them a, a midwife or you want to call them a doula, they were catching babies, they were doing the birth work, they were doing the community piece, they were supporting those women, supporting those families. Um, but um, when the system, I guess, uh, interjected itself, into that, um, into that rhythm, they created that need to have um, accreditation. And with that um, came the title of midwife, but then the byword, if you will, of doula. So it's a lesser form. Because many of these women, as you know, um, Canada, US, uh, anywhere where we are living in captivity, these black women, a lot of these women, even though they knew their work inside out and they, they had, they knew what to do and no one could do it better than them from even the system's own uh, mouth. A lot of them couldn't read or write, right? So it was like, okay, well, yes, you're really great at all of that, but you know what? We're just gonna call you a doula because you don't have the literacy skills um, for us to license you to call you a midwife. Does that make sense? Yes. So this training that I recently took um, to um, to get the, I guess, the, ed the educational background um, of the birth work, because some of it I had already been doing and supporting my own friends and family yeah. um, with their pregnancies and, and their births. Um, but I, I was like, I want to, you know, I want to I guess solidify it, if you will, <laughs> yeah. um, and just get and learn more information, and also get connected with the network, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. like I said, the work that I had been doing was um, prenatal, but these women were, by the lens that I was looking at, it was more from the child development piece and supporting the parent and connecting them with resources for the parent, for ultimately for the care of the child. But doing this uh, birth work as a birth sister, that is a different kind of work um, with the prenatal, wow. with the woman in the prenatal stage. I see. Right? So, um, but this training that I took was actually, um, it was developed and it is uh, facilitated by a woman by the name of Nicole uh, Diggins and she's out in New Orleans and she's a registered midwife and nurse. Um, and she started doing this doula training, but she um, was doing it from an African-American lens, if you will. So her target um, audience is to train other uh, so-called black women um, uh, in doing this birth work, uh, regardless of what their experience is, if, they, if they're experienced, if they're accredited, or if they're just new, someone, for example, like myself, who was doing work with children and families, but now to do this piece of the work, to come on in and do it. And she really breaks down um, the history of birth work um, in our cult, in, in, in the culture, as well as um, the understanding that, um, that when we do this work, we're doing it, we're actually sisters, sisters in this birth work, right? And, um, and so to do away with this, this byword in this colonial word that they gave us doula. So that is why we say birth sister. But what a birth sister or doula is, is someone that is there to number one, advocate or um, maybe not in any particular order, but to advocate, to educate and to support. So to, um, to ensure that the woman and the family um, understand what's happening, right? A lot of times people go to the doctor and let's say, for example, it's not, it's not to say uh, that you shouldn't go to the hospital or you shouldn't go to go the OB uh, way to, um, throughout your pregnancy if you chose to do that versus doing a midwife and doing a home birth, let's say, for example. But whatever avenue that you choose to, to um, have your, your labor and your delivery, right? Um, but there's also so much more to being pregnant. It's not just that end piece, right? Yeah. And for women that are actually being mindful and purposeful um, and planning for a pregnancy, then there's even more work to be done, 
right, um, ahead of time or work that probably all of us should be doing. And if we had the, the understanding, the knowledge, the understanding, then we could put it into action so that it could be wisdom, right, for our people and to allow us to be better supported during the journey. And so that's exactly what a doula or a birth sister does. She educates, she advocates, and she supports. Yeah, well, I feel like everything you're saying is really making me think like that, like when I'm asking what is a doula, I'm honestly, like I heard of people getting doulas and I just feel like being um, a so-called black woman, right? A Hebrew, it's like, I don't know what ha we, like you said, we lost every a lot of our culture but and so we're here most of us are like what is a doula like what is that they don't even they don't even know what it is they don't um not like you said there's a lot of women who are now especially now awakened trying to be informed trying to educate themselves but there's a lot of us who aren't still and don't have right. that support we need so right. like you said if we are in um we will maybe some of us don't even know we have a choice to have a baby at home or in the hospital and so that's then exactly we right. exactly right. to go or to a birthing house. center well, there's also something that's oh, called yeah, the birthing birth center. center so it's kind of an in-between option so for so for example um my daughter my eldest daughter just recently had a baby i just recently leveled up to grandparenthood i'm a safta <laughs> and um when my daughter uh, was planning for her uh, labor and delivery, um, she chose to have it in a birthing center. And a lot of times the birthing centers are attached to the hospital or they are so uh, affiliated with the hospital. What the birthing center does is it provides uh, an in-between to the home and the hospital setting. So they are close enough that if something did happen that required an intervention that they could quickly and easily access the resources to be able to do that intervention if needed. But it also provides the environment that's more closely associated with home. So it's a lot more comfortable. It's a lot more welcoming. A lot of times they, uh, well, before COVID, they would allow, you know, more family members to be present and, and that sort of thing. And, and they might have, you know, the jacuzzi, uh, and some hospitals have it, like a jacuzzi in the birthing room or what have you. But the environment is a little bit more warm, if you will, than yeah. the hospital setting. So it's like an in-between option. But you're right. A lot of women don't know that they have the option. Yeah. And within those options, there are so many other options that a lot of people don't know. And a lot of times, especially if you're a younger mom, right, and even some of the older moms, if you're a first-time older mom or you're a younger mom, first-time and, um, and you're younger, you may go into a doctor's appointment and they may be throwing things at you and you don't even know that you have the option to say no to something or to ask, or you might not know what questions to ask or feel so overwhelmed in the moment, right? And then agree to something, or even if you don't agree, walk away because it's so much to think about. But then when you go to your next appointment, you still end up saying yes to something that you truly don't understand what you're and saying. Yeah, to. so it's it's like um, a, what is it called? Like a uneducated decision you make, or a exactly uninformed, a uninformed exactly. decision. So somebody, mm -hmm. most of the time, we are in that. First of all, let's start with a lot of us. I could I'll speak for myself. So mm -hmm. having my first, and I have five, and having my first um, and second and third it was just um i I'm, i just you just do whatever i you do whatever you're taught and so if you were taught from someone who maybe didn't have this wisdom where um then you're just going to go with the culture and the culture i notice is when you go into the medical facility or wherever you decide you're going to do it with these medical with most medical professionals not all but most that mm -hmm. i have experience with it it's it's i am the authority and you do what i say Right. And I will right. not give inform you on why. And I don't speak to you as if I give you a ch an, um, a, uh, an option. Or like you have choose. an option. Exactly. It's I'm this. You are um, this many weeks. I will see you next week. We will do the blood glucose. We will get this vaccine and we will take your blood. Like yeah. and be here for this, that and that. And then when you're in and, and then same goes when you are in labor. I'm asking you questions. I need to know this. I need to know that why you're in pain, why you're in like all of this is going on. 
You need this. You and need then that, so you need I can that. tell you what to do. And nobody told me. They just said they hooked me to the IV. Nobody said what was going in my arm, what was getting taken out of my arm, why I needed it, and if I mm -hmm. had a reason. Like you know, so everything. So you just do everything. Like even like exactly. I, everything I said, exactly. it was like this is what you're doing, not this is what you're doing and th um, this is what I would recommend and this is why I recommend it. Here are the pros um, or here's the benefit and mm -hmm. he here are like, you know, what is what's the opposite of benefits? So I can't find the word right now, but like here are the risks, here are the risks there you and go. here mm -hmm. are the, um, the, benefits. the benefits or symptoms. So then I can make go. my own educated, um, um decision or even what i'm comfortable with because you know like some people are more comfortable with um like 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 let's say something small wearing that um big elastic thing around your belly or getting the um the blood work to find out if your child's gonna have all these different you know something even smaller than that i'm sorry to yeah tell me yeah no tell me something small right. please. something even smaller than than that I mean, those are big things what you're yeah. talking about yeah. and you're right a lot of times we don't even people don't know that they have the option they have the choice or that they could ask a question and if they don't understand they can they can um they have the right to have it explained to them in a way that they yes. understand yeah um but some people don't even know that they have the option to choose a time for their next appointment that is mutually I was convenient. Gonna, I was thinking about that when you said even smaller than that. I was like, yeah, like I don't need to Sorry, come. I'm like all next week. up and trying to not even myself. well, not even yeah. next week. Like sometimes, most of the time, it is. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the time, it is that like we we're gonna see you next month um, or next week, you know, or or whatever. And you don't even have to do that. Like with my fifth child, I went there. I seen a doctor three times, one to speak to midwives, the second to get an ultrasound. And the third was the was because I um, was 42 weeks and I went to the emergency room like what a wait, I'm having a um, I, I was having a muscle spasm in, in my inner thigh. So I was just like, I was kind of getting like, okay, I don't know why I'm not healing. And I, I feel like I'm going to fall every single time I have right. this spasm. So if I am in labor and I'm, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to fall over. So anyway, so I'm just saying, and I was fine. The baby was fine. And I'm, I'm not recommending people to do that. I'm just saying, that's what I did. I had the choice and decision. It's not illegal to do that. Like to not see a doctor to get my height and weight every single month and then every single week. And then she, when I got there, she said, you need it. You're going to have to get um, induced. And in, it was three days from then because I was 42 weeks. And I, I, she was talking to me like, I have to. And I told, I, I didn't because they kept trying to bring up this argument about it. I just, um, they were was trying to, me. I was there pressuring me with fear. I was um, mm -hmm. trying to avoid the conference, um, the conversation any longer. Yes, and then I the didn't, I, yeah. yes. And I did not even, um, end up getting in I didn't go back I, it was in my, when I realized she wasn't hearing me and she wasn't going to allow me to say no I guess I mm -hmm. um even though I could have I just have an issue with like I don't want to be that person to be like I feel like they expect that me to is be exactly that person. why you need a birth sister exactly why I need a birth sister because a lot of us or are oh, not just anyone especially when you're pregnant vulnerable under that pressure you need somebody who's going to stand there and tell you and tell that doctor my you know, my sister, I don't know what you, what would you call her yeah. after you're the dog? Well, what do you mean, call it, your client? It depends. It depends on, on what you're, on how you develop your relationship with your, okay. your client. Right. Um, but at the end of the day is that you will number one, act as a translator. So when, when they start throwing around all their jargon and so forth, then, and like you said, making statements instead of asking questions, right. Um, to, to the patient essentially then you can be there to translate and say to her like listen girl like this is what this actually means like Shemazara, they're telling you that they're going to put this iv in you in right now but i want you to understand what that means when you put that iv in right now okay um remember what you told me you told me that you did not want to um to have any interventions unnecessarily well you're you've only been in labor for six hours and um you know, everything seems to be going okay. You don't need that Pitocin right now, or you don't need 
um, to think you want to hold out a little bit, right? Yeah. As soon as they and put that in your arm, just remember, you told me you want to be able to snack. Okay. You, you said, I don't care what anybody says. I want to be able to eat. Well, honey, if you put that in your arm right now, you're not going to be able to have that snack. Is that wow. what you want to do? Right. So even something as simple as that, you don't even wow. have to always talk to the, to the, um, the medical, um, uh, person, you can speak to your client or there might be other times when you do need to speak to the medical person, right? And um, on behalf of your client, but ultimately your client um, makes the final decisions, but it's just important that you're there to be able to advocate, you're there to be able to translate um, and to help them make, like you said, a more informed decision. And, and it can now, there are different levels of support that you can get with the doula. You can get a package, let's say, for example, where the doula will accompany you to your appointments, right? For exactly that reason. So that all, you know, you decide which appointments that you want them to go to. Like maybe you're not going to go to every appointment, but maybe your client says, you know what, the last appointment, these are the things that they said to me and I really didn't understand. Um, I'd like you to come with me to the next appointment so you can hear what they're saying to me. Sure, no problem, right? Or you might have a, a, um, a doula or a client might say, you know what, I only need you doing my labor and my delivery, right? So it depends on what they want. For myself, what, um, what I'm offering um, to families is um, anything from, you know, from needing someone to go to the appointments with you all the way through to if you just want um, to have uh, you know, the support during the labor and actual delivery or, um, and also that most important part that people forget about often is the postpartum piece, right? And for us from the Hebraic lens, those first 40 days for the birth of the male or the first 80 days for the birth of a female, they're super important. And that's the, where you, where a doula comes in, it might be something as simple as organizing your circle, your friends and family, so that you can get the support that you need throughout those 40 or 80 days, right? Um, letting people know what would be most helpful, you know, for you. Because a lot of times when you first have a baby, everyone wants to show up the first week. Yeah. Okay, great. You want to see the baby the first week, but I actually in the first week don't want anybody around because I'm still feeling so sore. But how about you come by the second or the third week and you drop off something to eat for me or you come and pick up my laundry and do a load of laundry. Yeah, that's, you know what I that, mean? That's that exactly that's a sister might need um, somebody to help organize her support system so that her support system can work more efficiently to support her and ultimately support the family. Right. Yeah. So there's all these things to consider, but yes, um, I think we went off a, off on a well, lot of tangent about that. Well, but, no, it's everything. But I think it's important to yeah. understand it's very um, important. the role. And especially today where so many of our women are um, experiencing negativity in uh, when they go to the hospital. And I'm not trying to scare anybody that, that is planning on do a, doing a hospital birth. Well, but I what think, I am well, saying yeah. is, you know, there is a higher percentage of women that have unnecessary interventions that um, increase the risk of death for the mother and the child. And let me tell you, they are quick to cut up our women. Um, you know, my, my story, like, oh, you don't even know, it's a horror so story. If you, don't, if, you, if you don't know, you know, if you don't know better, um, then you can't do better. So at the very least, I, um, when I was praying about coming into this work, because really, to be honest, for me, part of um, wanting to get this training was I was thinking about my own self. I was thinking about, I already have three children, like I mentioned um, before, I have children and a grandson, but, um, but I was thinking about um, conceiving again. And so in that preparation, in the preconception preparation and just thinking long term and so forth, and because now I'm walking in the truth, I'm super hypersensitive to what is going on. And I was like, hmm, if I was to um, conceive and have a child, like who would help me to bring to bring forth this child? Because I don't want I don't want to have certain experiences. You know, I, I would like someone who is um, what we would in the Hebraic uh, sense considered clean, okay. right? Yeah. Versus yeah. unclean to, to help me bring, to, to help me have that experience. And in that search, 
um, what I found, certainly I'm here in, in Canada and Toronto, I'm in Toronto, um, it was very, very hard to find um, a sister and then also um, a sister that, um, that is walking closer to, to my walk than not, um, that I would feel comfortable um, uh, having that privilege to be part of, to be part of my birth experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. And when I seen that challenge, it made me say to myself, well, if I'm looking for that and I can't find it, there must be other sisters out here that have the same thought and, and that are also looking and can't find it. So how about I do something about it and try to fill a little bit of the gap anyways. And that's how I en um, ended up um, getting into the birth work piece to add on to the early years and youth and community work that I'd already been doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my question for you is when you couldn't find a doula or midwife, you know, um, because you wanted to, you know, have a more um, holier birth plan, correct, right? Is that yeah. safe to say? So I, um, I, I fell into the same problem where I was planning my unassisted home birth and I could not find a, a well, from my knowledge, um, I figured, okay, well then let me, I didn't want to go with the midwives anymore. Cause I was like, I could do this thing. And I felt like the most high was leading me to do unassisted, but I was like, but I still wanted more information. And, um, I felt like an in some support because there is no, I don't have like any sisters nearby. I don't have an assembly. I don't have a support group, like a, a parent or a, I mean, I have a parent that would, wouldn't mind being there, but I wanted a holy birth plan. And right. she, like I said, I was raised, like, just do what they say. And even when she was there with me, she, every time she's with me, um, she just listens to whatever the doctors say, like anything yeah. the doctors say, she just does it. So she would encourage, I, when I, am like against what the doctor is saying she like gets kind of uncomfortable because i make her i feel like i've been making her uncomfortable when because you're asking questions and i'm she's asking not questions to i'm mm -hmm. saying no i like i like i'm being difficult like in her eyes right you know? so i that's not what i wanted so um of course you know um but so then anyways i called doulas i just looked on um, it you know local doulas i wasn't I guess so concerned. I mean, I I do think about it, like about how maybe they're not sisters. I did. I, I called the sisters though, but um, maybe they're not in the walk. You know, they don't know okay, my so, beliefs. Yeah, so those doulas I called, they said um, they could not be there unless I had a midwife or unless I had a doctor. So that is another. So that was another question for me for for doulas. Um, what can you not do? you know, and being a birth sister, you know what I mean? Like the, like, I understand you could probably do everything, but I'm saying legally, what, what is, what is it illegal for you to like do? Because I felt like it would be okay if she, maybe somebody was there supporting me, informing me, making sure I was making the right decisions. But she, the doulas were telling me, um, but in my area were saying, um, you know, they don't, unless there's like a midwife there too. Yeah. they wouldn't be there for so me. essentially um because of going back to licensing and certification so you can do a training and get certified by whatever organization is uh, that you get your training from right they can certify you um to say that you completed um the training and then um uh so but on um i guess on a government level internationally there is an association that is recognized internationally they offer training they offer um you know they connect people they have a network they offer professional development for for doulas um and so forth and i am being purposeful when i use the word doula in this instance um because such an organization um is very much feeding into the systemic racism that occurs, right? Because they have only, they, they offer a certification that's recognized internationally, but they determine what trainings qualify or are eligible. So for example, um, then 
for example, like the training, for example, that I took with the sister who, who, um, uh, who it's sister mid midwives. And if you're interested in becoming a doula um, or connecting with a network or they also have a directory. So your directory, the home birth, uh, Hebrew home birth directory is specific for sisters in the truth, looking for other sisters in the truth doing this birth work. Um, this directory is a generic one, I'll say for uh, the so-called black woman if you will right so this is for african americans and that's the way that it's uh, packaged um and the directories for african americans and for african american birth workers right that's actually from that directory is how that was what i found so when i was doing my search and i was trying to a find a sister can i just get a sister that's that was the first thing then my second thing once i started finding a sister was hard the second thing was now okay well can i find a sister in canada <laughs> everything that was coming up was sisters in the states right south of the border then when i did start finding the sisters um that are doing this birth work um the midwives and even some doulas um the ones that i found and listen if, if you're watching this recording um and you're in canada you're doing this birth work or you know of something please drop it in the comments let me know because i would like to get connected um but i couldn't find um number one an organization or a service that was providing specific um service and uh and being purposeful about targeting the so-called black woman in Canada or in Toronto or in the GTA and surrounding areas. Um, and the ones that I found that were associated, like that were working, I guess, for an already for an organization, um, a lot of those organizations or those individuals themselves were promoting things that are against Torah. I'll say that. Okay. And so for me, well, that made well, me really uncomfortable. Okay. 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 <laughs> Do you, do you see where I'm going yeah. with that? Yeah. So I, that's okay for other people, but it wasn't okay for me. And so I just wanted someone, even if they weren't in the truth, I wanted them to not be promoting things that are against Torah in their yeah. work. Yeah. Because they're literally advertising their birth work. And I guess just the same way that I'm being purposeful about targeting um, the Hebrew community, they were being purposeful about targeting communities that were against Torah. And that made me uncomfortable. And I didn't yeah. want that for myself. Right. Yeah, and um, I'm not saying that their work is not good work but, um, or that they wouldn't have good information. But yeah. for me in my walk, if the Most High still grant me to be able to uh, become a mother again, I don't want to. I want it to be as clean as possible. I want yeah. to try to prepare myself to be as clean as possible. Yeah um in my mind in my heart in my spirit in my body um and i would like everyone around me to also be as clean as possible yeah does that make yeah. sense well yeah like well was the word say right do not <laughs> be conformed to the patterns of this world you know and so that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect you know good that's functional acceptable and perfect will like that's his will exactly what you were you were trying to do something according to his will which is that's why i started hebrew home birth and and now that we're starting you know getting this conversation going we see mm -hmm. you know i'm seeing more like-minded moms and that is that was that's where i'm seeing there's a need and so um you know it's it's i that's why i asked what can you not do as a doula right so to speak to that piece is that, um, I guess what it comes down to it, uh, technically a birth sister or a doula um, cannot be the only um, medical person um, to, to deliver. You need to have either a midwife deliver you, um, be, be present or a, um, a doctor, right? A doctor and a midwife, those are the two that can, legally um do all the legal components of of the birth work that happens right um and the medical piece now that being said that doesn't mean that if you decide to do 
what you did. I'm so proud of you, by the way, and doing a free birth. And that actually came to my mind and it scared me very much when I thought to myself, oh my goodness, maybe I might just have to like wing it and do it on my own, you know, um, and then figure out the steps afterwards, what to do afterwards once you have actually um, of giving, giving birth. But if a sister decided that they wanted to do a free birth or if a sister had uh, was planning to do a home birth and you know the baby came before the midwife arrived, then that's what happened and who was present was present. Do, do you understand? Yeah. Um, but but it's not but legally a midwife. You, you you're supposed to have a midwife or or a doctor present for your birth. Well. Um... And okay, and so if it's, but I mean, unassisted, women can do unassisted. It's just that the doula should, um, it's not recommended that the doula assist in the birth, you know? Like, right. so, I, I, so I'm saying, I understand. So from my research, I see that like these certification organizations that you were mentioning, some of them say no. And then I've seen others who certify other doulas who say, um, it's okay if a doula is at an unassisted birth. Not, right. So I think not it depends in, on. So it's not illegal to um, be there to, to be the in, to um, inform the mother and educate the mother and um, and, and the mother and can pay the you. Baby. And right. Well, or um, yeah, to do what you know how because that's what the what my research was said was like. Okay, the mom said she wants to do unassisted. So if the mom catches the baby herself, that's fine. But if you see the baby the mom's going to need your help, then you are, you are trained to have been able to accompany, right. you know, so you can uh, assist them on. Okay. So I think what it comes down to is it comes down to the, the birth certificate and all of those pieces, right? If you, if the family is deciding to register the birth of the child and, and all of those pieces, that's a legal document. So that legal document, it has to be guaranteed by, by a medical professional so um that's that's registered i guess um i'll use the word registered versus certified I, I, i'm not sure what the correct language is but for example a midwife a midwife has to be registered not just certified and, and have the education but she has to be registered she has to be licensed that's the word licensed just the same way as a medical doctor has to be licensed right because a doctor could lose his license to practice then he would not be able to assist you technically right if, okay. they had, if he had lost his his license i don't know which way to go girl sorry yeah. um so that that is the thing now something that i actually just learned um recently by experience with my daughter and my grandson because my daughter had planned with her birth plan to give birth at the birthing uh, center but it didn't end up going that way and um again, talking about having someone there to advocate for you and be able to ask questions and so forth. But here was my daughter who had been in labor for a few days. Oh, sorry, hold. So just really quickly about my daughter, um, and uh, you and I talked about this offline, but just in case there's any sisters out there yeah, yeah. Um, that either have a spontaneous home birth, yeah, right, a spontaneous unassisted uh, home birth, or who have an intentional home uh, unassisted home birth. But um, what we learned, so what happened was my sister, my daughter had planned to uh, give birth at the birthing center. Um, and then she ended up um, being in labor for, I guess it, uh, it started probably even two days. So they had, they sent her home three times. Wow. Um, and they kept, they just kept sending her home. And they had already sent her home twice earlier that day and once the day before, on um, that same day that she and that same day that she ended up having him in the night. And um, what what happened was she ended up having an unassisted home birth. Um, and then when she when she called the midwives, this is where the midwives uh, let her down. Because when she called the midwives, the midwives knew that she was already expecting. They knew that she had been sent home three times from the birthing center, right? They knew that it could happen at any moment. And even though she had not planned a home birth, but a midwife is trained to support families in a home birth, what should have happened is the, home, the midwife should have came to her home. But instead, what the midwife did was tell her to call the ambulance. 
when she called the ambulance, the ambulance took her to the closest hospital to her home, not the birthing center where she had planned to give birth. And that had all her medical information, had you know all her midwife sites and stuff and so forth. And so from the moment the 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 ambulance got involved is the moment that, well, I'll say the climax of the decline in the care that she received and the climax of the systemic racism in medical uh, in a med medical care that she received began. But really, it began when they kept telling her, no, you're not in labor. No, you're not in labor. And she's telling them, listen, I'm ready to have this baby wow. because she was young, because she was uh, because she was a first time mom. And quite honestly, I really believe because she was a woman of color, you know, um and so when she the ambulance came and they took her to the to the nearest hospital and it just happened to be one of the poorest hospitals around in the gta area and surrounding area um poor meaning in uh in status of care right yeah um you wouldn't most people wouldn't opt to go to that hospital is what i'm saying to you right if they had an option hence why she planned to give birth somewhere else even though she lived closer to that particular hospital. Um, and they told her once she arrived that if the placenta was not still attached to her and the baby wasn't still attached to the placenta, that she would have to prove that it was her child and that CAS would come in and would have and the child would the baby would have to be with CAS until such time as they could prove that it was her child. So who said even that? knowing who said even that? having a medical history with another local hospital yeah, so having that, a midwife going to all her checks and everything everybody knowing what her you know what her status was and so forth what the expectation was even though the a hospital had sent her away and so forth even though she called but, the midwife but who before, said the midwife who said that? Called the, sorry who said that the hospital the hospital informed her well because they didn't I, know her they didn't have they didn't have the information they're saying that hospital didn't didn't know her right and didn't yeah have, so uh, that's the, that's what i think is like uh you know really but even it's a the, lie even if they had no, brought her to truth. sorry to cut you dear even no, if they had brought her to her the hospital or the birthing center where she was expecting to give birth if the protocol if the placenta was not still attached to her and to the baby she would still have to prove that it was her child yeah and i think right? the way that she was able to prove that would be where those midwives or wh wherever her doctor was but they would have to bring that um stuff so i think that brings well no it, uh, they would have to do dna and all that stuff well, I, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel you, but like, do you think like, that's what they said, but really are there, are those like, what, that's what I'm trying to understand. Like, I guess that was going to bring me to my next question. That's why I'm saying that is because, mm -hmm. um, the, if you have that care, because that's what I was told. If you have the ultrasound with your name, mm -hmm. it has your name and your, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's how I was trying to cover myself when I did my unassisted mm -hmm. birth and didn't want to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. I, and, um, over the phone, I remember I told you, I forgot that, but now it's coming to me. So it was, I needed to have a ultrasound with my pic, with the picture of the baby. And obviously it had the date, it has your name. So that's one. It has all your information. It has all my information. It has my doctor's information. So they know that was me there having that baby at that time. Mm -hmm. And then, um, also, yeah, that, I think that was the only thing I needed. And then when I had my checkup, I had my baby, you know, like I already had that set up where who's going to check me and who's going to check my baby. So if I had those right. doctors in line where mm -hmm. I probably seen them before when I was pregnant, so I had those doctors, I seen them when I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. I had my, when I delivered my baby, I would have those doctors, um, see the, the baby. So then there was nobody in the way so they could sign whatever papers I needed them to sign, which was birth certificate, papers, you know, um, that was it only a birth, a proof of a home birth. That's what it was like, they give you a paper that says that you had a home birth, because that's where and right. it says you had the person who was there to notarize it. I mean, the person who was there, if anybody was there, you write it down the address. And so it was my husband. So he we went and got it notarized. And then we had um, and then the doctors were signing two doctors to sign and yeah only one doctor actually one doctor and it was one doctor that signed it off 
um, because she saw me at, she, that was the doctor that I saw in the emergency room. And she, right. was, so yeah, I went to go see her for my checkup and a week later after I had the baby. And so that was all I needed. So I think so if mothers, your mother, your daughter wasn't prepared for that. So I right. feel like for those moms out there who decide to do unassisted to make sure that, that at least they get the, at least the, um, ultrasound photo, a, a doctor to see you while you're pregnant, um, at least once, and then a doctor to see you and your baby after you're pregnant at least once. So then when you have that paper, it, there's no reason why that doctor shouldn't sign that paper. Right. I think in addition to those things, what my advice would be is for any birthing mother um, or pregnant mother or doula or midwife is to find out what the rules are in your province, your state, yeah, your city, yes, right? Yes, for sure. um, because I think it varies, uh, certainly in the United States, I know that it varies um, state to state. Um, and then for Canada, um, uh, it I'm not sure if it varies a province to province province to province, but the best thing to do would be to find out if this is something that you want to do, um, to have an unassisted home birth, okay, because if you're having an assisted home birth and you're having a midwife um, be present, and that's something else I think that people need to understand, because a lot of times people might be like, well, why do I need a doula if I have a midwife? So what you need to understand with the midwife is, with a midwife, you're going to get a little bit more of, um, I'll use the word homier, I guess, um, experience, right? You will be able to, um, a midwife will be more open to a natural uh, approach to your birth plan and to your pregnancy and so forth. But you're still, uh, and, a, and a midwife might have even more visits um, during the prenatal period and uh, the postnatal period as well, postpartum, they will have more visits than an actual doctor. But what people don't realize is they think that when you have a midwife, the moment you start feeling like you're in labor, that when you call your midwife up, they're gonna show up and be there. The midwife, not unlike the doctor in a hospital experience, doesn't come until the last stage of labor and in those active moments, that's when the midwife comes. So for the first and second stage of labor, um, they're not there and they'll probably give you minimal support depending on the person. Like maybe you have someone that goes above and beyond, right? But in terms of the type of care and support and the level of support they give, it's not um, to the same extent where a doula is giving you more handholding, if you will. I, I use the word handholding, meaning giving you more support along the way, depending on what you guys have decided upon at the beginning of your relationship, right? Of the, of the birth sister um, client relationship. Um, that doesn't mean that the doula is gonna show up at the first pay, but the doula will be available by phone or by video or what have you to um, checking checking in with you and with you to check in with her, um, you know, if you have a question or whatever, from the very first stage, from the very first pang, all the way to the end and postpartum right um, for you so that you have that support. So maybe not in the very, maybe when you feel that first pang and you're still kind of good and you're going about your day or what have you, or maybe you're like my daughter and you started your first pang started, you know, the day before your child even came, right? So you could talk to her, you can ask a question, hey, this happened, or I'm feeling this or, or what have you and so forth. She may come and check in on you um, once during that first stage, maybe the second stage, uh, she comes in more, but she will. And then as you progress, because you're having that constant communication throughout from the very beginning, she will come to you sooner and be with you for the whole duration and, of yeah. the rest of that labor. Make sense? Yeah. And so that's why I asked. So like, I really desire to have a doula with me. So I don't feel like it should be illegal for a doula to be there to help me and my husband. Imagine if I didn't have, I had my son four out and I was in labor four hours, but imagine if it mm -hmm. was maybe 20 hours in labor and my mm -hmm. husband needed 36 a rest, hours, 36 out longer. And my mm -hmm. husband needed a rest or he had, he was, you know, then it's, and I have five, I have a four other children running around. Like That's right. I would have, and I would have needed it. 
that's why I feel like imagine it was longer if um, someone could help even assist m my husband where it's like, okay, I need a, I, I need a rest. I've been up here. I've been awake for so long. I want to mm -hmm. be awake when the baby's born. So I want to hire a doula to help support my wife, you know? So um, exactly. that's exactly. why I, that's why I'm asking these questions because I want to see, okay, for all those women who are trying to plan um, mm -hmm. their birth. Okay. Maybe they want a midwife. Maybe they want a hospital birth. Maybe they, they decide they're going to get a home birth. I want a midwife. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't. I want a doctor there. Right. Maybe I don't. I want to do unassisted, but I want to do it too. I want that. I want to know if that woman there, right. if we have every woman, um, a Hebrew woman um, to say, is it okay for me to get higher and pay a sister to assist me? Well, not assist me in giving birth, but be there for informing me um to comfort me like a doula does you know mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and educate me and support me can i ha can i pay that sister to do that because i understand 100 you, you might have a daughter you have, might like like you said like you're like you might have a mother you might have a you know all these other um like you mentioned at the beginning we were that we sister were those friends yeah we were those um birth those workers and those we coaches, were exactly that was part of our culture at one time well, now we live in a different time, but it's like, well, is it okay to pay a sister who is trained in that and will support it, my It is not only okay, but I would encourage you to do that. And not just because yeah, I'm offering that's why the service, I'm but, um, but because, like I said, I mean, everyone will decide for themselves how much support they need right yeah. but and someone might say you know what i 100 percent want to go to the hospital route i want to go to the hospital route i'll feel more comfortable if i was at the hospital but at the same time where they might yeah so i mean it's for every family and every woman um to decide what what level of support that they might need um but what is what I've never ever met a, a, a woman, a mother, who whether she be young, whether she be old, whether she, whether she be, um, you know, a sister or from another nation. And I've worked in a lot of communities. I've worked in the Asian community. I've worked the Southeast Asian community. I've worked. I've worked with so many different communities um, in different cultures and so forth. Working with pregnant women um, and women with young children. Um, and never, ever have I ever heard a woman say, you know what, I did not want uh, help or I did not need support. Exactly. What you do hear women saying when they share their birth stories is that, you know, they wish they had more support or they appreciated the support that they had. Right. Yes. One of those two things. And in particular for our women, for our culture, for 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 the, our sisters, our families out there is that the, the known fact is, is that our families and our communities have not been functioning the way that they were meant to function, the way that we originally functioned before living in captivity, meaning that we don't have as many as the tight circles and networks um, around us. What's even more true is that coming into the truth, even if you did have a family support before you, that family support, you may not have it in the same way anymore because you have either separated yourself because of this truth or you've been ostracized because of this truth, right? Um, and so more than ever during your pregnancy and your labor and your birth and those postpartum weeks, are so important that you have the resources available to you or that you have someone to help um, organize the resources around you. Because some of these sisters are lucky. They belong to an assembly or to a camp. They have other sisters and families to fellowship with. That being said, are they organizing themselves in a way that's most helpful for you a new mom? right? Maybe they are. That's fantastic if they're doing that. And if that's what's happening, maybe some of those persons, those sisters that are supporting that work might be interested in this birth work to, to be able to do it from an even more informed a lens um, with this training and this education. Um, but if you don't have that, hiring um, a sister or hiring a doula, hiring a sister who is providing that birth sister um, support from a Hebraic lens may be exactly what your family needs. And, you know, these days, 
um, I had my children a long time ago. My eldest is 24, and my middle is 19, and my, my youngest is 14 uh, years old. So uh, when I was having children, you had, you know, uh, a baby shower, and then maybe after the baby was born, people might come and still come bearing gifts or what have you. But these days, they're having gender reveals. They're having a big, huge party for that. They're ha I even see Hebrews doing this, and there's not, nothing wrong to celebrate life and the birth, I'm just saying. But if your community is coming together and you guys are spending all this money on and on these elaborate um gender reveals and these elaborate baby showers and spending so much money in decorations and you know fancy presents for the family please y'all organize yourselves and put that change together and give it to a family so that they could have the support that they need during the pregnancy and during that labor and that birth so they could have an advocate for them so they could have that support so the husband could have some support like you said as well as um as well as the birthing woman um and in particular uh, like i said during the actual i mean at all stages i can't even think of one stage that's more important than the other even if you haven't um, conceived yet, and you're thinking about conceiving. Conception begins um, in the spirit. It begins in the mind. So if you have started, you know, if the most I laid it in your heart that that you want it, that you want a child and you want to bring forth children in this kingdom, and and that's something that you want to do, then there are things that you could be doing to prepare your mind, to prepare your heart, to prepare your spirit um, for. And that's where preconception coaching comes along. And there's ways to do that within a Hebraic lens. There's um, definitely all natural approach and remedies to help support the detoxification of your body, the physical detoxification, and then the fasting and prayer to go along that to prepare your spirit, right, um, for, the, for that process to bring forth. So I guess, I don't know, I'm really passionate about, uh, mm -hmm. about this work um, and about just child development and parenting and so forth. And it's just really, really important, I think, that our people have the tools. And having the tools starts with having the, having, um, being educated about what your choices may or may not be. Um, and so that you can make informed decisions about your conception, about your pregnancy, about your labor and delivery, and about your postpartum experience. And, and part of that comes in developing a birth plan, but a birth plan is good to have, and, and you should create one, um, but you also have to know that at the end of the day, however the most high decides that your birth experience is going to happen is what he decides, but you have to prepare. So just like, just like success is when opportunity, um, or sorry, when preparation meets opportunity, it's the same way that when knowledge and understanding are put together in action, that breeds wisdom. Well, so now good. that we know better, let's do better. Let's put that action together and let's work together to, to do this build, this kingdom building and to bring forth these children in as clean as possible. So this next generation that comes forth, they have a chance to be the, um, you know, the progenitors of the 144 because we know this time is coming, right? Got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that's, that's so good. Like everything you said. And I, I definitely want to do another episode on about the birth plan. But I want right. to, um, I just want to ask one more question concerning this. Please. Like was um, about the certification and, orga um, and organizations and trainings. Like, I mean, I just want to, the reason why I asked this, I want to, so you know, and you, you can expound and, um, give me understanding. And also I'm not on screen right now because the baby needed to, I need to nurse my baby. Nurse, so, that's okay. Yeah. So I think, that, that's what this work is. about. Yeah. This is all about, <laughs> right. So, mm -hmm. um, it is, um, do you need, okay. Okay. Everybody needs to be informed. I, I just want to, I'll bring it back. The reason why I asked this, so I'm, so I don't sound ignorant is like you said, we were at one time birth workers and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we didn't do, um, the training and all that stuff but because we were in these experiences and we live in 2020 and you can buy oh well 20 where you know 2021 ra rather and you can mm -hmm. go online you can learn so much in this age of information online with books um take you know courses all different types of things do does a doula need or a birth worker or a sister a birthing sister need need to actually get certified through any of these organizations like i mean it's awesome if you can but what if um maybe you haven't yet or you can't yet like 
can you, is it, um, do you have to be certified or licensed in any way to um, be paid as a, you know, as, as a birth, as a birth worker, or as, as, as a birth a, sister or a doula. Yeah. So the answer to your question is no. So you do not need to be certified. However, I would recommend the training. And just to be clear, just because you take the training doesn't and complete the training, it doesn't automatically certify you. There's next steps. Yeah. Okay. So if you, you can do a training and, and after you've done the training, you're yalla, go ahead. Uh, you can begin, um, you know, providing your service and, and, um, and essentially start your business. Right. Yeah. Um, and before that, even doing the training or simultaneously, as you're doing the training, if you're already working with families, you can do that work. Um, but in terms of being certified, then there's next steps that you have to do. So there's a certain amount of birthing hours that you birth work hours oh, that you need to put in okay. um, so you that... need to attend a certain amount of births, um, live birth. Like, there's, so there's requirements that, that, um, that allow you to become quote unquote certified. And right? that, and that would also give those moms a, something to look at for anyone, whether you're certified or not to see right. and say, okay, you're certified, um, but you only attended one birth. You don't have any children of your own. And maybe I don't- No, really... you're not certified. You're trained. You're trained. But, you, but you're not certified. Exactly. You're trained, but not certified. So, right. okay. But then you possibly could be trained and then have been to multiple births before you even knew that doula was a thing. And then you get on, you know what I mean? You get on, um, you got a bunch, you, you attended so a bunch of births. If you have attended, if you have supported and attended births before the training, those do not count towards the certification. Okay. The certification um, needs to the those births need to happen either during the training or afterwards. Is my understanding? Okay, okay, I get it. I understand. And then, oh, thank you, pumpkin. And then, um, that was my daughter. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. And, and then, um, so then the other thing to take into consideration, like I said, is that there are all sorts of different, um, institutions, if you will, or organizations, um, that are providing this training, right? Doula yeah. training, right? But, um, their certi everybody's certification process may not look exactly the same, though they may model each other, if you will. Well, right. how when do then, they get this certification? Like, wh how does that come about? Because the reason why I asked this is because there was a one that I was considering near me and then I was doing the research mm -hmm. on her website and mm -hmm. she kept, she has a channel and she mentioned that she did not get certified, but, um, I, I, well, she didn't say she didn't get certified at all. I didn't see where she said she got certified. I only seen okay. where she said, I, we, I did not get certified, um, by this organization, doula, Doula of North oh, America. Zona. Right. So she exactly. said she didn't so get that... certified, but then this is the thing. Now she certifies people. So I want to understand exactly. where is these it a sister? people. She's a, a... she's a sister, but not like a he. But not sister. like a sister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No. 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 Um. Yeah. So. So exactly. So remember when I mentioned before that there's an organization that is recognized internationally. Okay. And they have a list of trainers if you will or training programs if you will that they recognize and will certify you so if you go through that train that x okay let's say you go through abc's um training program and go through whatever certification requirements that they say which probably mirror um this international organizations then um and there and that and abc is on their list then you can be certified and have that organization's name behind you right and it which just I and it believe just is and it just and it just really looks good but it doesn't listen this is what it is this is it, it was the system yeah. <laughs> okay i'm gonna tell you straight it, the system created their own system okay <laughs> so that's really what it is and so there have what has happened i think because when you go through and you read and i took the time and i literally navigated their entire website went through all the reading material and all their all the things that they have in regards to their certification and what they look for and x y and z and it is very exclusive it excludes many 
right? Um, and now that there have been some groups come and form or, or, or other organizations like the sister um, from New Orleans, um, Nicole, uh, that I did her training, her, her training or her organization is called Sister Midwives. Um, and I highly recommend her. It was excellent, excellent, excellent. And we, and they still have meetings. Like our training group was the first online uh, training group that she did. Um, she usually does them in person. Um, but, uh, the, the group still meets once a month, um, in a zoom and, and shares and sharing network. My, I have a group, they started a group chat. Um, and the messages, the sisters just sharing information from all across, I think that was the only Canadian, but all across the US, um, the participants still sharing information and, and different things and trainings and just things for your clients and so forth. So it was really, really great. The real sense of sisterhood, um, even though she's not in the truth, she, she delivers her program from, um, I'll, I'll say a spiritual or faith-based uh, component. Yeah. And again, like I said, she is um, black focused, right? The so-called black focus. Um, and so it's really honing in on purposely uh, training uh, black women so that they could support other black women and black families um, or so-called black families. So I recommend her um, but there are others, like there's also the Black Lilies Association that which um, which also, I guess, seems to me like they're developing into some to a quote unquote black version of this other international one. But the point is, is that there's no government regulations on on what certification looks like for a doula. That's, so really, yeah, anybody I was, I can say that they're training providing a training and then certifying the person. Oh, so then it's right? certifying. Okay. Okay. Right. So for example, to become a midwife in the U S or Canada, there yeah. is specific government regulations and, and things that they need to um, meet requirements that they need to meet in order to be able to say that they've provided this training to say that I have taken this training and I've become certified then to register with their, uh, their organize their organization and to be licensed to practice. Right. For a doula, they don't, that it hasn't happened yet. How did you answer that? The, um, about the whole, um, the government regulation. Cause that's, I guess I didn't know right. the words for it, but that's what I was asking because of everything. Um, I mean, right. it would be kind of awesome if we could figure something out and be grandfathered in before the, the government started regulating to make like a holy birth sister <laughs> thing. Right. <laughs> but, right. um, yeah, maybe that's, maybe what that's what the most high is leading at some point, but because there's, I feel like there's a, it's very hard to find like, um, doulas or, you know, all over the place for us, you know, like, like I said, I've been sitting here, I'm in Rhode Island. There's not even an assembly in Rhode Island. There's nothing here. Nobody, you know, nobody. And so, but a lot of us are, we're living in such a time where it's like, we, most of us are like-minded where we're like, we want to stay kind of away from the hospital right now. Right. Um, I mean, some people are going still, they're fine, but depending on who you are, a lot of us are. So then it's like, well, then what is another safe option and legal option? Right. You know what I yeah. mean? But, yeah. every, but, um, in like, where you're going to be informed and educated, you know, because like, like I said, I start when I made my, um, unassisted home birth video, um, I just wanted to share my experience in what the most high was doing in my life. And then like so many people in the comments were like, the most high is leading me to do the same or this and that. And probably because you, they can't find the support. And they asked right? all the support. So we need the support from one another. And right. so that's why in a way I was like, kind of asking, like, first of all, can, um, um, a one basically, can I, because the, like I said, the doulas were saying, no, I cannot be there. I was like, well, well, then I want to know as just a woman about to have a baby, am I able to choose the birth I want? Am I really able to choose the birth plan I want? Well, I was mm -hmm. told, no, I cannot. Um, mm -hmm. well, that's probably because of the type of people or the people who were certified under certain, you know, were just like, no, that's not what I want to do. Right. So, and then the second question was, okay, well, what about now I'm, I want to learn how to do, I'm getting more educated. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. I'm looking at which I'm, thank you for sending me about that woman's and it's, it's happening right after when I chose to, um, um, celebrate 
the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So, so right. it's like right after it. So I'm like, that perfect seems like timing I might, for you. yeah, perfect timing. So I was like, well then great now, you know, but at, at the beginning I was like, okay, now we got a stimulus. So I, it seems like I'll be able to take the class, but if I didn't, I'm, I doesn't seem like I would be able to take that class and, you know, unless a miracle came about, which, you know, I believe the most high would if he leads me, but how many other moms or women who are home who love family, love women, love children, want to support their sisters and want to be educated and want to get paid if they can. And we, because we love supporting our people, want to pay our own people to say, Hey, I am looking for one. I would love to pay you sister or right. Hey, I am one, like a, um, a birth worker, and I would love to assist you if to I am support if you. I am exactly. support you if I am. I'll obviously go through whatever you would, you know, what you're looking for if we're a great match. So anyway, right. so yeah, that's where I was like kind of going at. Like I feel like this is, yeah, I'm just so grateful that I was able to talk to you and get this information because it answered a lot of the questions of what a doula is, what they do, and then the names and where, I didn't even know about our history about being birth workers, like, I knew that we were doing something, but, like, you just brought it to another level, like, where it's, like, actually, it was, like, what we did, it was our culture, like, my grandmother, right. I was, like, when I have a baby at home, she was, like, well, don't ever do that again, went crazy, and then I was, like, how are you Brainwashed, born? right? I said, and how were you and born? And she said, at her house, and she's, like, but the midwives came, but I'm thinking, in something. segregation, they were probably called a midwife, but she probably wasn't licensed. She probably wasn't. That woman came over to the house and I was, and then she, and I told, and then once I told her that she was like, um, she was like, well, when she told me that, then I was like, okay, so what has changed? Well, Other I'll tell you what's mindset. changed. The, the, the system was purposeful in brainwashing our people and convincing our uh, people that their way was better than the natural way. Meanwhile, our people were birthing their babies, never mind. When they when their women were in the throes of labor or having complications in their pregnancies or their labor, they knew exactly what mammy to call, you know, yeah. um, to I'm come sorry and support. You, I'm sorry. sorry if you lost me. It's just no um... no. Um so so it was our people all along, right? And I mean Let's just take it back to scripture, <laughs> because at the end of the day, we know who the, the first Hebrew midwives were, Shifra and Pua, um, and, you know, and the Most High named them in Exodus, um, Exodus, and, and, and in particular, Exodus 15 to 21, and, and that really moves my heart when I was called to do this work, how I feel I was called to do this work in like I said, because of what I wanted for myself, but then realizing that there may be a need for others. And let me tell you, there was a block because when I first um, thought about doing this work and getting trained, um, this was before COVID happened and the pandemic and the, the lady that was offering the training, she was only offering in-person trainings and in the States. And then I had a conversation with her and we were trying to um, plan and organize how we could get her to come to Toronto to provide her training to Toronto. Because I thought, you know, there's got to be other sisters out here, um, even if they're not in the truth, but that are interested in doing this work and, and might be interested in this training. But it so happened that the way that she likes to, she likes to do her in-person training and the scheduling of it, it fell over the preparation day and the Shabbat. And I wasn't having it. I was like, well, I could help organize everything to happen, but I can't participate on the prep day, the evening of the prep day or on the on the Shabbat. Um, and, you know, I got a lot like I got a little bit of pushback from her, but she, she was understanding, understanding, but and she kind of stuck to her guns. Well, this is what I need. Like, that's not going to work in order for you to um, to get what you need out of the training. Um, but and some people, you know, in, in my in my life family who are not in the truth and not, um, you know, keeping Torah, they're like, oh, well, you know, it's only a few Saturdays, like, you know, it's not a big deal. But for me, it was a big deal. So I ended up putting that on the back burner and just kind of left it. And, you know, things happened. Um, and life continued. And then when COVID happened, um, something that I've been praying about in my own life for a long time is, um, I've been praying about asking them most high, like, please show me how can I 
help myself? How help me to help myself? How can I use the skills that I already have and the experience I already have to not only help myself and, and my family in terms of, you know, um, providing and, 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 and bringing in income or extra income, but how can I use that work to, um, to support the building of the kingdom? And that was like my continuous prayer. And then it just so happened one day, um, out of the blue, I got an email from uh, this girl, this lady, and she was like, hey, I'm offering an online training because of the pandemic. I was like, what? An online training? This is awesome. Like, this is great news. And then when I checked it out, I seen that the timing worked. It was like during the weekday and, and so forth. And then I was like, okay, how am I going to pay for this? And um, just similar to you, um, I guess, in the sense, like, you know, being happy about the stimulus, my stepdad actually had been calling me and telling me to come and uh, come over and uh, for a visit. He kept telling me, I go, come over, I have something for you. And when I went over, um, right around the same time that I got this email, I went over there and he had an envelope for me and there was money in the envelope and he gave me an envelope and that's how I was able. And I was like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. Is this what you're telling me that I'm supposed to do most high? I'm supposed to take this training and I'm supposed to do this work. Um, and so here we are. So I was super thankful um, when I came across the Hebrew home birth um, directory. And I just wanna give thanks to the most high for putting it and laying it in your heart and your mind to put it together. I'm excited um, about this work that we're about to embark on. Um, and once again, if you're listening to this recording and you're already doing this work, um, whether you're south of the border, in particular, if you're in Toronto and the surrounding areas, please uh, put a comment in so that I can see that we can connect and let's do this together. And that's it so thank you for having me thank you so much like you don't understand how much i got today and i'm sorry my video is not on my phone broke out oh, well my charger broke so when it died there goes my photo so not to worry not to, i think the bulk of our technical issues came from my side today we'll get it right for the next one yeah yeah no problem i like whatever mm -hmm. this is life right so mm -hmm. um yeah so you an pretty much answered all the questions that I had for this, I, I can't, I look forward to um, hearing more about a birth plan, how to, um, what a birth plan is, how to do a birth plan, um, create one, you know, and how it mm -hmm. can um, support that and assist in that. And also um, how, as Hebrews, how do we make it holy, set apart, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I look forward to talking about that the next time. And I thank you so much for your time. And thank um, you. And yeah, can you like I, tell us about the Exodus 15 be, before we go? Why don't we read it? Let me get my word and, and let's read it out loud. Um, also, um, just before we think, I, I would love to talk about the birth plan, but I think um, for those sisters who haven't yet conceived, I think even before your birth plan, it's important to talk about pre preparing yourself um, for that pre during that preconception time. Yes, There's yes. a preparation that needs to happen over your mind, um, for your body and for your spirit. And, and then that's an important part. And if you're lucky enough to be at that stage where you haven't yet conceived, so you could be purposeful mm. about um, preparing to conceive and to bring forth, I think that that is a blessing and it's an important conversation. So maybe we can yes. have those both, both those conversations. Yes, please, please, because I as well I, as the birth plan and you know please. me, I, I want to talk about everything, like those no, no, zero please. to twelve years, the postpartum, everything. So um, yeah. Let me know if there's any, if you have any other questions, like I said, if you've been watching, um, please, please, please go to the Hebrew home birth directory. Our, our sister Shema Zura, she's put that together for us. And if you are a birth worker, register so that other people can see you. And if you're looking for a birth worker, then definitely you can find one. The other thing I want to let people know is that um, one good thing um, that's come out of uh, COVID is that we're realizing that a lot of things we can still offer virtually. So even in this birth work, so I mean, you, 
the labor and, um, and delivery piece, if you want someone to be there in person, in particular, if you're having a home birth, then that might be uh, limiting depending on how close uh, you are to your birth worker in proximity and location. But all the other consultations and coaching and support, um, even attending those doctor's appointments, everyone has a phone, everyone has uh, some sort of social, uh, social media or video access, so you can still get those support and those services. Um, even if your birth worker that you find and you connect is not living in the same city as you, right? Yeah, and as, and um, as a um, subscriber on um, Hebrew Home Birth, you can also opt to having that button on your page where you can, where um, users can go on and they can sign up to um, your, they can just press the button and then they'll see your, the birth worker's calendar and make it a virtual um meeting with that birth worker without having to go, you know, back and forth, um, back and forth with the email because it goes, they just see their count once they press the button, and they pick the birth worker, they'll see their calendar, they can press and have a consultation and whatever that birth um, service um, provider would um, wants to offer in their um, in there, if they just want to offer a consultation, then that's fine. If they want it free. If they want it paid, then they they have the option to do that as well. Awesome. And, and it. also, I I just sorry, so many things coming to mind for those sisters that are out there that are pregnant right now. Um, being pregnant during a pandemic is uh, no easy feat. Being pregnant under normal quote unquote normal circumstances is not easy. And um, if you are having a birth are planning to birth at a birth center or at a hospital, um, please find out how many um, supports you're allowed in with you. So for example, my daughter yes, was only allowed to have good. one support. So I provided support over the phone um, to her, for example. Um, but that being said, again, you can find a birth worker that would be able to give you that support over the phone, whether it be video or audio so that they can still you can still have that their presence and their and their support and their expertise on hand with you even if you can't have their physical body with you in that space if you're having a home birth then it's different because it's your home you can have who you like in your home right so that's just something to consider for so with you sisters that are pregnant right now, um, if, if you don't have a birth worker support or a birth sister with you, I encourage you to make a list of questions um, for the next time that you meet with your midwife or with your doctor. Um, and if you don't have time to make your questions before you go there, definitely um, ask your provider if, if they feel comfortable with you recording your visit so that you can go back and listen to it um, so that if you have questions then you can come back with your questions you have options you don't have to say yes to everything you don't have to say yes to anything in that moment um, and you should exercise your right to say you know what i'd like to take this away with me and think about it or i'd like to know is there any other options what other options do i have um, and a lot of times they might be they might pause because most people don't say hey i want to think about it or uh, what other options that you have but um but if you if there are other options they are required to tell you what they are and they will yes thank you so much for sharing You're that that's very 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 important very important so thank you so much for sharing i You're am welcome. so excited to um, talk more about um birth planning and everything else that you know having that support um and having an advocate that is for us can offer us so um shalom and shalom. we will see everybody at the next podcast yeah and put your questions down we'll get yes. your questions too please please put your questions down okay shalom everybody good night